Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this webinar entitled Thermoplastic Honeycomb Sandwich Panel Technology, Meeting the Cost Efficiency and Sustainability Targets. It is brought to you by GEC Group and presented by Thermex Waben and Ecomcore. My name is Benjamin Debuchère, and I'm Program Manager for GEC Group. In this webinar, we will discuss today First, the current state of the art of thermoplastic honeycomb sandwich panel technology. Second, the potential of cost reducing lightweight construction with honeycomb cores. And third, the future challenges for the industry. When browsing through successfully developed application example, a case of replacement of conventional paper honeycomb polyutheran glass fiber base part with a sustainable thermoplastic honeycomb technology in automotive interiors will be also presented. Such case was nominated as finalist of the last KMIX Awards two weeks ago, and it will be also featured in the next edition of GEC Composites magazine focused on the automotive industry that will be released on October 15. This presentation will last about 15 minutes, followed by questions and answers. So I invite you from the beginning to share your question with us by typing them in the question tab on the right of your screen. You have also the possibility to upvote the questions, but in any case, we will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded, so you will be able to view the entire program online on GECcomposites.tv. Our presenters today are Dr. Jochen Flug, a Chief Executive Officer at Econcore and Managing Director at Thermex Waben, together with Thomas Zarnecki, Chief Operating Officer at Econcore. Thanks again to all of you for taking the time to be with us today, and I'm going now to hand over to Jochen and Thomas. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. So we will start with the presentation. There it is, about our thermoplastic honeycomb sandwich panel technology and how we can meet cost efficiency and sustainability targets. We will start with a look at the state of the art to introduce our, well, first to introduce sandwich uh, construction and honeycomb cores, and then to introduce our continuous uh, production process for thermoplastic honeycomb cores and panels. And then we will move to cost reductions to present the cost reductions we have already achieved with applications of the technology today. And uh, with our polypropylene honeycomb cores and the organo sandwich we produce at Tamex. And finally, we will have some look at the future challenges to automotive targets with recycled PET-based honeycomb cores and to, auto, to aerospace targets with high-performance thermoplastic honeycombs. I usually like to show this slide at the very beginning because it shows how in nature material and energy saving is a fundamental principle and how nature um, in many examples structures the material to save resources and costs because also nature is very cost conscious and resource conscious and the honeycomb from the bee is a very well-known example for minimum use of material and uh, optimal structuring of uh, of of the material and it's actually dates back to the greek history when the first man-made honeycomb was made and uh, honeycomb structure from the bee was admired also in, in Greek history. And the story of Daedalus and Icarus is well known on one hand for, for the dream to fly and it has it's inspired many engineers uh, for thousands of years. And um, it's also actually uh, using thermoplastic materials and, and fibers, if you so will. So it's also some uh, mythology about, um, about using composites. So I think it's a very nice example. And the, the golden honeycomb of Daedalus was finally um, donated at a temple in, in Aries in Sicily. So, and of course today, well, in the history of transportation, there are also 
quite some nice examples about sandwich construction. The first trains had a sandwich frame to save weight. It was uh, worn iron and wood. And the first planes actually here in Sachsen-Anhalt, where we are today, uh, in Dessau, Junkers uh, made the first modern aircraft with the structure inside the wing, actually having the wing as a sandwich construction. And uh, he had patented 1915, first patent on using honeycomb cores in this sandwich construction of the wing. Finally, he moved to corrugated structures because it was very difficult at that time to bond the skins to the honeycomb core. But already very early on, sandwich construction made innovations in transportation possible. And of course, today, find sandwich construction in a broad, broad range of applications from aerospace to packaging in transportation applications everywhere where low weight and uh, high stiffness is needed. And we target to reduce the cost of sandwich construction further. Those, this reduction is possible to, due to reduction of material, but also reduction of production costs. And I have here some more recent application examples of um, honeycomb sandwich technology in the falcon fairings and in the landing legs. One finds carbon fiber face sheets on aluminum honeycomb core. And also very recent, last week, uh, Elon Musk presented a structural battery, which is actually using the battery as a structural element in a sandwich construction. So taking the function of the core and providing shear and compression stiffness of the sandwich battery pack and being really one loaded element in the battery. And he explained very nicely uh, why this uh, sandwich construction is a, a good thing. And uh, let's listen to him. Just like uh, if you have like a Formula One uh, crop or like a Oops. Maybe we do it. Just like uh, if you have like a Formula One uh, craft or like a, a racing boat and you have a uh, carbon fiber face sheets and say aluminum honeycomb between them, uh, this uh, gives you incredible stiffness. Um, and it's really the way that, that any super fast thing works is uh, you, you, you create a um, basically a, a, a honeycomb sandwich with, with two uh, face sheets. So. It's the way any super fast thing works, he says. It's also the way any super efficient thing works, I would say. Um, so that's very nice. Uh, um, that also in, in the new uh, developments of, of uh, sandwich structures and, and batteries today, the principle of sandwich construction is, is used. Um, and this is a very efficient principle to save weight and to save cost. This table shows uh, just a simple comparison with a monolithic material and um, a thin sandwich, which is just 20% thicker and has the same stiffness. And this saves already 65% of weight. And if one makes this uh, sandwich even thicker, twice as thick, then one can save up to 80, 82% of weight with the same skin material. So it's just very thin skins on a honeycomb core to get them the same bending performance. And actually this reduction of skin material and in the core, very little material is used because it has very low density. Then one can save in principle as much material as one saves weight. And this material saving can result also in a cost saving so it's actually a material cost saving, which can be quite substantial if the production processes are very efficient. And there's many different types of core materials can be used. Uh, form core materials or cup shaped type of materials, textile or pin cores. Very efficient in production are actually the unidirectional cores, corrugated or extruded boards which are very low cost in production, but not so good in mechanical performance. The best performance actually, the honeycomb cores deliver because they're vertical cell walls and connected cell walls. So this is very good for the shear and the compression performance. 
But one of the big problems so far with honeycomb cores were the rather high manufacturing cost of these cores. So this is due to the traditional process of bonding skins, of bonding uh, layers together and to a block and then expanding the block. This block is then usually dipped into resin and uh, then the honeycomb core is sliced from this block. So this is a very time consuming process. Um, but actually this process uh, has been invented here in the city of Halle where we are today um, by the company Heilbrunn and Pinner. So for decorative purpose for, for paper uh, goods. Um, and they had locations in Paris and London and New York and had brought this production technology of honeycombs into paper honeycombs at very early time in 1901. And today still honeycomb cores, also thermoplastic honeycomb cores are used, uh, are produced in conventional processes. This process here on top is a tubular process where tubes are extruded, collected to a block, and then the honeycomb is sliced from this block. Also another process where uh, blocks are extruded, welded together to a bigger block, and then the honeycomb is sliced from this block as shown here in this slide. And uh, both of these processes are very difficult to automize and show a low degree of automation and therefore relatively high costs. Plus, with my add, they are also difficult to integrate with regards to skin lamination, right? It's a sandwich core, but not the other panel. Indeed, you need further on then an additional step offline handling of the sheets which are cut from a block, handling of the block, first of all, and then slicing and then laminating something onto the core. And in our process, we actually have continuous automated process which uses the aerospace internal structure, hexagonal honeycomb cores with the best mechanical properties and uh, low weight combined with production principles and production technology from the packaging industry with automated production and very low production costs. And this is the Tamix thermoplastic honeycomb core process, which starts from one sheet. And uh, this sheet can be extruded directly out of the extruder from the raw granulate. And then the sheet is directly thermoformed, rotational thermoformed in a continuous process, and then folded up, pushed together to form the honeycomb core. And then inline skin layers are joined onto this core. So that is a big advantage in our process that we have a continuous further processing of the core material to join directly inline skin layers. And this makes this uh, honeycomb core um, very cost efficient and uh, it's an automated inline process. And we have international granted patents for this technology. So here you see the production line. So at the, the beginning, production line, uh, in how, right? I like think it looks right. another yeah. year, yeah. There are many different uh, uh, variations possible of such a line. We start here with an, from an extruder, have the extrusion of a film, which should be shown up there. So it's a flat die where we extrude the film and have directly a rotational vacuum forming. And then this pattern is pushed together and folded up and directly then we join skin layers in this laminator to bond these skins together and onto the core we can cut off the side can directly extrude to this edge trim again so we have no waste and then we cut the sheets and stack the sheets so it's a very automated inline production process and uh, well who else then the company who wants to be the leader in production technology worldwide uh, can give us uh, some advice here. So let's listen what Elon and his team have to say. The key to a high performing assembly line is accomplishing processes while in motion, continuous motion, uh, and thinking of the line as a highway 
max velocity down the highway. No start yeah. and stop. No city driving. Exactly. No st stop lights and traffic lights or anything. You want the highway. Not the highway. Yeah. Actually, there was a video about to come, but let's see. Oh. The key to yeah, a high-performing assembly line yeah. is yeah. accomplishing processes while in motion, continuous motion. Uh, <laughs> and thinking of the line as a highway, max velocity down the highway. No start yeah. and stop. No city drive. Exactly. No st stop lights and traffic lights or anything. You want to be what? the highway. Not the highway. Yeah. At least the video didn't have a start and yes, stop. Yes, so repeat it twice. <laughs> so we want the highway. We want to have actually the German highway. Autobahn, right? Yeah, <laughs> 250 kilometers per hour or 300 miles per hour, actually. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's very yeah in, in tr included in our technology to have this continuous, endless production. And uh, it's it's very nice that uh, this is actually something which which is known and, sh and should be remembered for any new um, process development that uh, it should be a continuous automated process. Yeah, and speaking of this autobahn uh, or highways, uh, well, we, we have a few licenses, a number of licenses in different geographies having such autobahn production lines. Uh, typically, uh, indeed, with this integrated skin lamination uh, and this type of different skin matches our licenses apply, well, uh, those uh, depend on the uh, applications. Yeah, I think, uh, indeed, you need to click here. And, um, uh, well, you can see different names uh, over here. Uh, Tata Steel, obviously dealing with steel. Uh, steel skin being laminated onto a polypropylene honeycomb core in this case. We'll discuss their applications a little bit further. Finotech, uh, best regards, Solomon. I saw you are joining. Thanks for that. Uh, many other licenses from different uh, market segments. Uh, KFK, Kodobukiya Front, a tier one supplier, um, uh, a Japanese one. Texel, another Japanese licensee, uh, also active in automotive law and Bonner, Renolid, uh, some bigger names uh, indeed. Uh, all wanting to deliver this local solution, but performing solution uh, at low weight to the market. And with regard to these applications, um, let's see, I think I need to use this one here. Yeah, oh, that's one too far. Um, well, uh, obviously we started uh, with this cost-sensitive cost um, applications like, like packaging. You can see that here on the left-hand side. Um, and it would be more durable packaging, obviously. So uh, reusable packaging, uh, those boxes would be a very good example where performance is needed, but also this reusability is of, uh, of key importance. Many automotive applications developed already by our licensees. We'll come back to them later, but here on the right hand side, on the other hand, well, probably one example will not be coming back a cladding in, uh, in a van. Uh, furniture applications, not just furniture, um, um, you know, for, for internal design for, for house, uh, but also uh, they, well, recreation vehicles, right? A lot of, a lot of those applications. And, Commercial transportation, building, this is mainly where Tata uh, Steel comes in with their steel laminated panels, Law and Bonner, and other licenses working in building applications where, in some cases, acoustic performance is appreciated, um, and that is both the honeycomb. I think I'll have a little bit more of those examples um, down here, broken to, to greater details. We'll not um, discuss this in, in, in depth, really, but I uh, just wanted to show you some of those examples here a bit closer. So these packaging examples and a few licenses operating in that segment indeed. Uh, so those boxes we discussed, but also pallets and um, other materials, other uh, applications. Uh, on the next slide, uh, we'll have these applications of uh, Tata, Tata Steel. And this is indeed, uh, well, initially Tata Steel, interestingly, was focusing or was targeting building application, but quite quickly they realized that opportunities also exist in transportation segment. And actually those are really, really uh, the leading edge for them uh, with regards to business development. Uh, and this would be very much the track trailer constructions, the uh, walls, uh, roofs, but also a lot of substructures within a truck and trailer. And obviously also those uh, facade panels, uh, inner and uh, outer cladding as well. Um, this, uh, this is actually, um, development of our licensee Renolid. Uh, this is an outdoor kitchen. Obviously, outdoor kitchen uh, will needs to be 
uh, insensitive to moisture because it's kept outside. And this is where paper honeycomb, for instance, sometimes used in indoor applications would not do that job. So uh, here we have a thermoplastic uh, honeycomb company, propylene honeycomb core combined with composite schemes. Uh, as you see on some of those panels, the edges are very nicely finished. Uh, surface uh, is, is decorative uh, or laminated uh, at once. And indeed, well, uh, one likes to have those uh, furniture kits uh, movable. You want to shuffle them around uh, so they, they should be lightweight. And uh, here they are. Um, and then, uh, well, one other example. Uh, this is the application of Loen Bonar, just newly developed uh, application where they would be using, or they are using already, in fact, a combination of a polypropylene honeycomb core with uh, non moving skin layers uh, as an underlay uh, for flooring. So uh, on this underlay, uh, underlay uh, vinyl and other cladding or other uh, flooring uh, panels would be laid on. And the job of the honeycomb core is to insulate and to absorb uh, the um, uh, acoustic uh, or, or the, the noise. Uh, but also, uh, obviously, the compression strength of the honeycomb is, uh, is, uh, is very important uh, in this application. Well, um, back to uh, who we are, uh, EconCore and Termex, well, group of two companies, EconCore, um, uh, with the headquarters in Leuven, um, and uh, Leuven actually has been uh, just newly elected as the capital of European innovation. So we are very proud of that, and I'm personally proud working at an innovative company in, a, in the capital of innovation. The focus of uh, EconCore is um, pretty much optimization and development of the technology uh, towards the needs of the licensees and towards the, the future needs as we see them here at EconCore. Uh, but from the commercial perspective, uh, it will be very much the licensing business uh, that we uh, continue with. So it is providing the technology to the leading uh, companies in different market segments who take this technology on board and deliver these local solutions um, to the market. Over to you, Jan, for Termex. Yeah, well, actually, with EconCore, we, we I think we contributed a little bit to this uh, um, title of, of Leuven. Of course, because we are a spin off of the Cow Leuven, uh, where we are very thankful for the support. And um, of course, this background is, is also as a, as a research um, uh, focused company in our genes. And uh, well, but also at Tamex, we have a nice uh, background and historical background. Uh, as shown before, we are at the birthplace of honeycomb production technology here in Halle. Uh, so since 2010, we have here in Halle our production and, and sales of uh, honeycomb core materials. Yep. And uh, you see here the factory. Um, so we have 5,000 5, square meters, so we don't need so much space for our production line. And we are very close to the city because it's a clean production of thermoplastics, and we can produce about two million square meters per year. Per year. Not um, really, yeah. <laughs> and we have a high degree of automation in our line, so there's no handling required. We get the raw material from silos, actually delivered very close from Skopau here, south of the city, um, and we have an automated uh, quality control which is very easy to do with an automated process. We have um, a production width of 1.4 meters, standardly 1.2, and we can reach speeds above 10 meters per minute and have, here you see a view of robots stacking the uh, sheets and the sheets are then automatically uh, moved out and the next stack is starting. So with this we produce our honeycomb core in the thickness range from 3 to 30 millimeter with 3 millimeter cell size to 9.6 millimeter cell size, especially the small thicknesses and the small cell size are uh, a very um, unique um, property we can reach with our uh, core, with our production process for, for low cost polypropylene honeycomb cores. And we think we have the most cost efficient honeycomb core, polypropylene honeycomb. So we have mainly two products. Uh, the polypropylene core is used with the non-woven skins for thermoset uh, processing. We add a non-woven, which is welded into the cell walls and gives a very good bond. And it's very easy to laminate 
composite skins with epoxy, hot melt yeah. polyurethane, a lot of type of glues can be used. And we have also a call for thermoplastic further processing. Um, and here you see a view of uh, the properties. The properties increase quite dramatic with the honeycomb with the density of the honeycomb core. Which is indeed an interesting thing to point out because typically for foams, right, there would be more linear relationship, right? And for honeycombs, it's like a small delta in, in, in density, yeah? uh, generates quite a bit of uh, improvement of compression strength. Yeah, so usually honeycomb core, um, foam cores are more here below. Um, so uh, this is different polypropylene based honeycomb cores and they are usually all on one line. Um, we can go in the density from 40 to even more than two, whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> and in the shear properties, we see here the, the shear property in uh, W direction, in, the, um, in our production direction, is already quite good. But in our core, um, in the transverse direction, we have even substantially better shear stiffness. Here you see um, the different range we produce from three to about 30 millimeter. Uh, standardly, we have densities 60, 80, and 120. We have a standard sheet size, but for us, it's very easy possible to produce large lengths. We are very flexible in length because what we cut off is on the next sheet. So that's a big advantage. And uh, we usually have a polypropylene film and this non woven to close uh, the core, but we can also make customized um, solutions from larger volume orders on. So the different applications uh, of our standard core is mainly in composite industry. So there customers laminate composite skins on, uh, laminate uh, complex uh, sheets and, and uh, structures with our- Prefabricated uh, products, right? Prefabricated yeah. bathrooms, uh, gondolas for wind power, swimming pools, yeah. caravan industry, a wide range of industries. And I just show here because uh, we come later to a lot of thermoplastic applications uh, with thermoplastic skin materials. So this is an example where we just had um, once um, our uh, polypropylene thermoplastic honeycomb used with epoxy glass fiber skins and uh, hand laminated such a fender for such a replica car. And this is of course a very small volume, and but it shows that also good surface quality and uh, um, yeah, complex parts are possible with honeycomb cores in such a manual lamination process, of course, with rather high processing costs. So this shows a little bit the, the transition of the different products. We have the polypropylene honeycomb core for thermoset further processing. And we have now also an organo sandwich product, which is essentially joining organo sheets or long fiber uh, thermoplastics composites on uh, the core as a cross ply based on UD tapes. So this we specially developed for high volume markets in automotive, high volume applications. And here you see some simple uh, comparison of the material properties of such a six and 10 millimeter thick organo sandwich. If we compare this with a steel sheet of two millimeter or aluminum sheet of three millimeter, we have here with steel a weight of 16 kilo per square meter. And with aluminum, we have about the same uh, bending stiffness with three millimeter and about the same bending stiffness with a monolithic glass fiber. Which, which is probably quite expensive. It's quite expensive. It has the same weight about than aluminum, so this, it's difficult to reach with thermoplastic glass fiber based composites a lower weight. Um, and it has to compete then with costs, which is difficult with an aluminum. Um, but if one uses very thin sheets, so just one millimeter of the thermoplastic composite has below two kilograms uh, per square meter in weight. And um, of course, it has no bending stiffness, but with a core of five millimeter in between, you get to the same bending stiffness than with a three or 4.5 millimeter monolithic composite. 
and have then a weight which is closer to two euro uh, kilogram per square meter and this translates directly in euro per square meter and very nice to see is the big bending stiffness increase you can get with a 10 millimeter for very very little weight as we saw effect right yeah. yeah so that is really the the potential of these materials as cost saving if you see it's factor of four lower yeah depending on the price per kilogram you have a big difference and this we really think is um, has big potential in automotive so the target of, of this project we have together with the Fraunhofer Institute here in Halle is to share, uh, well, to produce on, on the first step this organo sandwich in a continuous automated process, producing our core with the extruder, vacuum forming, folding, joining the thermoplastic composite skins and producing standard sheets in large volume, very cost efficient, fast, fast, fast. And these sheets are then transferred to um, actually a tier one or a part producer in automotive, which heats up the part, uh, forms the part and finishes the part with functionalization, with over molding, injection molding equipment can be used to shape the part and to form, to, to add functionality to the part. And you see here an example part, which we realized in the meantime, so it's possible to withstand the injection molding pressure if the sheet is compressed. And luckily we only need load introductions or mainly need load introductions where the two skins come together. It does not make much sense to apply the load in one of the skins. Um, it's much better to bring the skins together like this is done in aerospace and then to apply the load introduction point actually on an organo sheet and to use the rest for the stiffness, the honeycomb uh, functionality uh, and the sandwich effect and to not have to use rips to stiffen the part. And this is much more cost efficient. We see a lot of potential in those automotive parts. So where high weight and specific stiffness and strength is needed, we think we can reach weight and cost reductions, have reduced raw material cost and reduce the resources also, reduce the amount of material we need. We have recyclability due to the thermoplastic, we have short cycle times and functionalization with injection molding. This is here with these parts nicely realized, but we think it can be done with the honeycomb core uh, at lower cost and with the same functionalization, but higher stiffness of the part because you, you take two of the composite skins at distance and have much more higher moment of inertia than with uh, just one skin layer and rips. Yeah, that's the idea, right? Well, here we have um, continuation um, of the journey for this automotive uh, applications, automotive interior applications. Um, well, uh, we've been looking really into different applications, primarily uh, in interior, obviously, uh, applications, uh, but then using different uh, skin material types. We've been looking into natural fibers. Well, great solution indeed. Um, uh, glass fiber can equally um, uh, well work. Uh, well, when processing those uh, thermoplastic honeycomb core laminated with uh, thermoplastic composite skins, the nice adventure, uh, the, the nice advantage is that we can really um, heat up the polymer uh, uh, also in the core, close to the melting point, and that uh, enables that the uh, polypropylene honeycomb core becomes uh, relatively soft, and we can actually form uh, these nice edge closures, edge uh, functionalization we can in fact uh, impose, um, uh, which is also a practical element, and that's all within one shot uh, process. Here on the right hand side, we have a little bit special application. Perhaps uh, this is a vibration uh, dampener uh, developed together with uh, actually by Nito Denko, one of our customers. Uh, this is where a very thin layer of a honeycomb core, 3.5 millimeter more specifically, is combined with uh, constant layers of aluminum, uh, uh, thin aluminum fall on, the, fall on one side and on the other, uh, there is an adhesive tape, double-sided adhesive tape that is laminated and uh, NITO would be offering this uh, product to, to the OEMs who actually bond it on the inner side of the metal uh, door in order to stiffen it. And that of course, uh, uh, yeah, it leads, uh, well, leads to reduction of vibrations when speaking of outer bands, when one is going faster, especially there. So very effective, very 
uh, well, lightweight solution and uh, perfectly doing the job, even allowing for reduction of the metal uh, sheet thickness uh, in, in, in some applications, perhaps. So, in principle, it keeps the damping layer at a distance from the metal sheet, and that in bending increases the damping yeah. performance. Creating a sandwich panel upon bonding, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Renolit, uh, uh, yet another licensee of Econcore, uh, indeed, well, uh, initially uh, here uh, targeting with regards to automotive applications, because obviously they have um, many more applications uh, on the plate, but with regards to those automotive applications, they've been starting with the premium uh, OEMs, uh, Maserati Ghibli, trunk floor, uh, this is, uh, if you buy one, you'll see our technology. In the trunk rider, uh, Jaguar F-Type, uh, that's also an example of such um, of such a matter combination where thermoplastic, so more specifically polypropylene honeycomb core, is combined with, in this case, um, uh, short glass fiber um, uh, polypropylene composite skins. Renolit has also the option to change the short glass fiber with wood flower, right, to create what they call wood stock, wood polymer composite, to be laminated onto the honeycomb core to create more sustainable uh, solution, perhaps, for, for those applications where this is needed. Um, uh, applications of our Japanese licensing here on the left hand side, uh, Toyota Prius, uh, Lexus LS, pretty much uh, the trunk compartment uh, trim there. Finotech on the right hand side here also active uh, in this automotive applications. The interesting point is that Finotech for long years has been uh, delivering um, uh, textiles and, and, and fab well actually uh, non movements to the automotive industry and today uh, they can laminate their own movements onto this um, polypropylene honeycomb core which is then used in the trunk floor and other um, interior elements um, as a light solution replacing hardwood and other uh, materials and uh, here we arrive into this um, uh, hyundai part which actually got nominated uh, for the camix innovation award um, uh, this is a combination of uh, polypropylene honeycomb core and glass fiber polypropylene uh, mats as skin layers. Uh, this is molded by DPA Moldados, a Brazilian tier one supplier. Interesting uh, thing to mention and not to forget that, well, initially in this uh, very same model, uh, so-called BIPREC technology was used. So a combination of paper honeycomb core and polyurethane glass fiber skin layers which for long years was very, very effective and still is, and it's very difficult to compete with, to be honest. Uh, but here in this example, um, well, DPA uh, with, with the uh, thermoplastic honeycomb technology got through uh, because not only, and we will come back to this, or we'll see that on the following slides, we offered a certain substantial level of weight saving, but also uh, the entire part can be molded in one step process. Uh, so there is one sheet of a sandwich preform that we start from, and uh, all is molded at once with the carpets uh, put uh, on beforehand into the molds. Uh, and uh, at the same time as the part is molded, again, thanks to this softening of the polypropylene honeycomb core upon heating, uh, we can form this V section, which becomes a living hinge of, the, uh, of this foldable track, because this is a foldable modular track. And of course, as you may see also, the edge is closed at once. Uh, well, here we have, of course, a cutout, but there, on, yeah, there we see that the, the yeah here exactly and that the edge is closed uh, and this is what uh, the automotive uh, people like to see i think if we switch to the following slide Jochen will yeah have a bit of a detailed look on this analysis with that uh, and this is actually um yeah this famous biker technology and eh, that we that we studied a little bit uh, this is a combination of paper honeycomb core and uh, again well what we've been analyzing here was also uh, the actual uh, setup used in uh, Hyundai Creta originally, later on replaced with the more effective uh, thermoplastic honeycomb technology. We have seen that uh, that uh, part was based on BIPREC was relatively heavy, it was uh, laid up, uh, as you can see over here. Um, uh, relatively heavy carpet, uh, definitely, yeah, quite a bit of weight, so material needs to go to the skin layers to deliver the performance. And uh, if we just move here to the uh, small analysis we also did with some other material solutions. Um, on the left hand side, we actually have here the combination of paper honeycomb with GMT skins, so glass fiber polypropylene uh, combination. 
which we actually have seen in Q5, Audi, for instance. Um, uh, well, there we have seen the performance in this short span, three-point bending test uh, here was, was actually pretty poor. Not to mention that paper is sensitive to moisture. And we have also seen that, uh, yeah, that panel is really prone to debonding. The bonding between the uh, paper honeycomb core and thermoplastic skin is not really uh, good. Much better, uh, it looks for that. Mm, paper honeycomb uh, technology with the polyurethane and glass fiber schemes. Uh, it indeed shows uh, very good performance, very good bending stiffness and, and flexural load, maximum flexural load in this case, at maybe somewhat higher weight uh, compared to the third um, one over here, which was actually finally the uh, selected uh, macho combination for the Creta uh, part. And this is this combination with PP honeycomb core and glass fiber polypropylene schemes. Um, and I think that the, the driver for uh, the OEM was not only that they can save this 20% of weight, but primarily because they can get that part at much lower cost. And this is due to this one-shot process where everything gets molded in one, uh, actually 50 second cycle uh, uh, process and uh, everything is finished, the only thing needs to be done is to put a grip into the uh, um, uh, hole that is basically created already in the mold. And it's fully recyclable. And it is fully recyclable in detail, uh, not to mention, well, it's also very, very lightweight. So the less material is used there, the better for recyclability, but fully recyclable, recyclable as it is. We are also, of course, looking at this organo sandwich, uh, which is the fourth uh, um, uh, one over here. Uh, please know that actually the thickness of that uh, organo sandwich is 12 millimeter compared to the, you know, higher thickness uh, uh, of other solutions. And nevertheless, we still get higher uh, flexural uh, load, maximum flexural load compared to the, uh, to the Biprex solution, for instance, at much lower weight. And this is thanks to this very efficient combination of continuous uh, fabric glass reinforcement in the uh, composite schemes. And the honeycomb core that is doing the job, of course. Now, um, we've been also looking, and we are further looking into the uh, same or similar combination, but then with the recycled PET uh, honeycomb core, so honeycomb core based on recycled uh, PET, and trying to combine that, uh, obviously, with PET-based composite schemes uh, to keep the monomaterial system in the sandwich for recyclability reasons, and we see that actually the performance of this PET panel is looking very good, and we'll continue that development for sure. And that's a little bit uh, what, what I just said, that indeed today, uh, those automotive parts in majority are made based on polypropylene material solutions, both in the core and the schemes, but our future or our view towards the future is to look more and, and utilize more of the recycled PET uh, honeycomb core combined with recycled PET, perhaps based even uh, composite schemes. Uh, to make this um, uh, automotive uh, interior parts uh, even more sustainable. And uh, speaking of this recycled PET honeycomb core technology, we have, well, we have been working hard to optimize the technology to, you know, adjust it in order to process very smoothly recycled PET materials, which we have uh, succeeded. Um, obviously, such a recycled PET honeycomb core has the advantage of very low uh, a footprint of CO2 emissions, and that is, of course, appreciated uh, by all industries uh, today. It is not a bubble, I believe, anymore, like it was a few years ago with, you know, bioplastics. Well, it really becomes a mass. Uh, and we maintain the good performance, adding perhaps a little bit to the heat, uh, to the high heat resistance or temperature resistance, right? Because PET, well, the way we process it, I can also offer that elevated um, uh, resistance to higher temperatures. And it can also be processed with thermoplastic skins, but also with thermoset skins. You see here some example with the bio-based thermoset resin and natural fiber skins. So we think these parts uh, have a very good performance and uh, a very low uh, environmental footprint and are very, very interesting parts for many applications. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, speaking of uh, recycled PET, uh, but not only, in fact, uh, well, uh, this uh, TU Ecomotive team, you might be familiar with uh, the group. Uh, they've been developing uh, for well, a number of years now, right? Uh, new generations of uh, sustainable uh, cars or cars based on sustainable material solutions. Lina, Noah, now Luca is coming up in two days actually they will be revealing the, the design, I mean the 
the picture is already there, but the, 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 the real car is going to be shown in two days. Yeah, so please visit uh, their introduction and their presentation of yeah. the car, where actually the full uh, chassis is made out of uh, yeah, a recycled PET-based uh, honeycomb sandwich panels with uh, natural fiber thermoplastic skins. Yeah, and actually, if you look at this Lina Nova, so the, the, the pre-generator, let's say, uh, to, to look at, uh, there we've been also serving with, in some cases, with uh, PLA uh, honeycomb, mm -hmm. uh, where they've been creating this uh, sandwich structures out of the PLA honeycomb core, bio-based uh, composite, thermoset in some cases, uh, uh, skin. Uh, formulation uh, very effectively and indeed well their 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 goal is to arrive to sustainable uh, uh, car uh, with regards to the material choices i think it's setting a very nice example to the to the bigger players to the oems who i'm pretty convinced will follow later or sooner um and, and speaking of these different materials we were talking about uh, some already about some chemistry as well here's an example um of a panel uh, combining polyamide honeycomb core with glass fiber poly polyamide skins developed together with uh, dupont and uh, californian based us based company armageddon energy um, for which by the way we got the gac innovation award a few years ago uh, so uh, this panel is serving for lamination of uh, photovoltaic cells onto it uh, in order to uh, reduce the weight uh, of the final solution finally 70 percent they can well not only that substrate as such is, is lighter but they can also thanks to the stiffness generated by the panel can increase the, the span so basically can can eliminate some elements of the framework they can extend that um, and uh, the reason, uh, let me mention this, uh, why we went to polyamide in that case was that uh, encapsulation of these photovoltaic cells onto uh, such substrates, uh, substrates requires elevated temperature. There are different processes, but in that uh, process, indeed, this elevated temperature encapsulation was uh, chosen. Uh, 145 degrees here, polypropylene may have a bit of a problem here to sustain the pressures applied at the time. Uh, to which uh, you know it is exposed to that pressure so hence polyamide being higher heat resistant uh, material but polyamide is just what well, one amongst the you know pts and the, the problems right then we it's have one, much more natural solutions that we've been looking at yeah it's one type of the high performance thermoplastic materials we are looking into and uh, the um, well, there are other uh, types of high performance thermoplastics and we call this development uh, TAMHEX new technology because it gives a nice short name as uh, TNT. And wait for it, Johanna, I have something for you. <laughs> oh. So we think this will be a, um, a little bit like dynamite for the uh, Armit fiber based. Uh, Armit paper-based uh, honeycomb cores, and uh, we think it is uh, has very high potential, especially the uh, high-performance thermoplastics polyethylene and uh, PPS, which we have successfully processed further to honeycomb cores, and which have uh, a very high FST performance. Um, we also processed further polycarbonate uh, with FST performance, which meets the targets. Of both the railway as well as the aerospace uh, um, yeah. industry in many cases. Uh, so it's a matter of choice we can make depending on the application. And it's continuously produced out of the extruder, so very efficient, low cost production. And we have succeeded to have some um, prototype part. Uh, this year is with the uh, polycarbonate FST honeycomb with uh, the glass fiber phenolic uh, pre break skins. And the deal was partner in the project and had. Uh, made a demonstration part with this technology um, and has excellent um, test results and fire uh, FST performance. They were actually well reporting the performance was close to the same combination of skins but then with normal score so that was really encouraging. Even better FST yep. results uh, one gets with the polyether emit um, so you see here some examples with uh, thermoplastic skins, uh, thermoplastic uh, composite skins. Um, the, FS, the PET can also be processed with pre-prec. PI. Uh, the PEI can also be processed with, uh, with phenolic or, or epoxy pre-precs. 
and um, but this is then more the traditional way of further processing, so really just replacing the Nomex core, but the big potential of the technology lies, of course, in going with a complete thermoplastic sandwich panel to very short cycle times and uh, a very substantial cost reduction also in the further processing to a part. Especially given that in many cases in this industry, and if you look at uh, how the Nomex uh, parts are processed, it's a lot of handcrafting, huh? a lot of a lot of labor involved. So we hope to save that a little bit in the, you know, towards this automotive wave, right? Yeah, and Compression if we come back and so to the initial, to this uh, material property slide with uh, the density and the compression strength, we have earlier seen the polypropylene cores here. So we think with the RPET honeycomb cores, we can reach uh, somewhat better properties with lower weight. And then we have the high performance thermoplastic uh, honeycomb cores where we think we can get close, uh, maybe even reach the performance of aluminium and Nomex honeycomb cores per weight. And uh, then we have an additional further development which uh, we call uh, high hex uh, the hierarchical honeycomb core material, which I'd like to present now shortly towards the, the final slides. Um, so this hierarchical honeycomb concept is actually rather new. It combines examples of, from nature with a hierarchical structuring of, uh, of material with examples from literature where it is, of course, we are not the first one proposing hierarchical structure, but I think we were the first one proposing to use a honeycomb sandwich panel as cell wall in a, a honeycomb core. Uh, so we are, since several years now, developing this concept further to have then um, a honeycomb core, which is um, from um, sandwich panels. So it actually the cell walls are themselves honeycomb panels with a honeycomb core inside the cell wall. And we have several uh, technologies now in developing to produce this. And um, so finally, we have then a honeycomb core, which has uh, skins on the sandwich cell wall and core in the sandwich cell wall and sandwich skins. We might need additional because we have a rather large cell size. We have started this development uh, together with uh, the Karolöwen and the Fraunhofer Institute here as Tamex and Econcore. And we received an Eureka label for this. And this Eureka project is now a big project for the next five years um, to develop this technology, uh, which we can show already that we can outperform the traditional honeycombs. Of course, it's another level of manufacturing excellence required to reach this. And um, we still look for partners for this project. So if you want to build the, the fastest car or the cleanest airplane or the, the biggest rocket. I'm pretty sure Yvelon is listening to this. He will just call you now. You should contact us. <laughs> <laughs> so with this, I'd like to just uh, sum up the conclusions. With the fast inline production process of honeycomb cores and panel, we can reach maximum cost saving, uh, with excellent mechanical properties of the honeycomb structure. We can have uh, maximum weight reduction Oops. and with uh, minimum amount of thermoplastic material, we can have uh, maximum uh, resource efficiency. And this goes very well together. So with continuous inline production, we have uh, maximum cost saving. With the honeycomb sandwich structure, we have maximum weight saving. And with uh, thermoplastic materials, recyclable thermoplastics, minimum use of material, minimum amount of thermoplastic material, we have uh, maximum resource efficiency. The Autobahn. And uh, just like to come back to the Greek history. So this is actually this mountain in Aries in uh, uh, Cecil, on Cecil Island, uh, where you have a spectacular view. Uh, from the, the temple where uh, Daedalus donated the golden honeycomb. And uh, well, actually the, the golden honeycomb of our days has to be a mm -hmm. shiny uh, thermoplastic, high performance thermoplastic honeycomb. Of course. <laughs> so with this, we well, have finished our presentation and uh, we like to thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, well, we are ready for questions. Absolutely.
Okay, thank you, uh, Johan and Thomas, for this uh, really insightful presentation. That was uh, great. Uh, and we do have a question uh, from the answer, uh, from the audience, sorry. And uh, of course, we'll get, we'll get started with those. Uh, and again, for the audience, you can still continue to type your questions uh, while we are answering the, the first one. So we, we've, we've got a first question from uh, Deepa uh, Jose from Collins Aerospace um, about uh, the flame performance of this uh, PP honeycomb material. Can you share maybe more information about, you know, FST, smoke flame, and yes, toxicity? Yes, I think, I think that, you know, aerospace industry will require a little bit more advanced chemistries than polypropylene. We've been doing a lot of tests with polypropylene honeycombs, um, not necessarily for the aerospace applications, but more for building and, you know, other applications where fire resistance is required, but where you know, the limits are at a little bit different level. And we know that, that uh, in fact, uh, it's very much up to the skin material to, let's say, provide a shield uh, to the honeycomb core. The mass of the honeycomb is very low, so the, you know, heat release delivered uh, upon, you know, fire is also very, very limited. But simply said, polypropylene is not the material to be used in uh, aerospace. Of course, we've been playing with different, playing with different uh, flame retarded additives uh, also. For those aerospace applications, we rather think of the FST version of the polycarbonate honeycomb core, PI, PPS, and maybe some other materials we've been yeah. playing so with. PEI polyethylamide has been qualified for aircraft interior applications. So it fulfills all the fire uh, smoke toxicity requirements. It yeah. is actually very good in, in these parameters. And uh, so we think we can we can meet these targets. Okay, thank you. We've got a, another question from uh, Vincent Ma uh, from Evonik. Uh, so Vincent is asking: Is the PP from recycle is from recycled source, or will the core be recycled at at end of life products? We recycle our in-house waste, so the edge trim and uh, in-house waste we produce. We can we can reuse this directly. Um, we have uh, looked at different sources of, of polypropylene, recycled polypropylene. It's, it's difficult to find really good quality and consistent quality recycled polypropylene. So you have, if you have there some, some proposals, we are open for this. But we think with, with the recycled PET, the PET recycle stream is much better developed and it will be much easier to, to work with recycled PET compared to recycled polypropylene. But if we if this develops further with polypropylene, we are very open in, in using polypropylene also for a recycled version of our honeycomb. Actually, from next year on, we target to be complete CO2 neutral in our production. So our factory will be CO2 neutral and our products will be CO2 neutral. We use green uh, power to, to generate, to, to produce our core. And of course, we have to compensate if we use virgin polypropylene but uh, our core is available uh, CO2 neutral. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, we've got another question from uh, Frank, uh, Frank De Vries from uh, Airborne Composites, who is asking, uh, are also local reinforcement applied in the honeycomb? Um, For putting, yeah, of course, yeah, putting. options to, to have load introductions. We have seen this welding down of the skins uh, to apply then uh, some some load introduction point there are techniques to to weld in friction weld or resistance or um, rotation uh, welding processes are available to get very good uh, inserts those developments are currently in development so there are companies uh, developing well, can mention the company EOT for example I know there are some people listening uh, so we, uh, these are fast options to to get inserts in those thermoplastic panels. Friction weldable inserts, right? so yeah. a few cycles, a few seconds of a cycle to put. A, but okay, this is this is insert, right? If it comes to reinforcement, uh, I don't know where the question is is is, uh, is oriented, but uh, yeah, we can also imagine that for instance, in compression molded parts, 
there could be a local reinforcement yeah. easier yeah. uh, put over, so that should not be a problem. If the thermoplastic honeycomb used this together with thermoset skins, uh, for example, uh, probably if they need, then the same potting can be used uh, then with the traditional techniques. Yeah. But it's of course more time consuming than really making use of the thermoplastic welding technology. Okay, the following question is from uh, Arshal at uh, Composites Tomorrow. Uh, he's asking, can PP Onecom core be used for crash landing or the cal calculated energy absorption process like um, aluminium cores? Well, and if yes, it, it will be helpful to have the data. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we had worked on some very crash resistant versions there. Are uh, polypropylene honeycomb is pretty good in crash energy absorption. It's a very ductile, it's a uh, yeah, not brittle polymer uh, type we use. And so it, it can crush and can absorb energy, but aluminum honeycomb is more efficient yeah. in this. There is an application example huh, where we have, I think it's actually developed by the Japanese licensee Gifu Plastic, huh, where they're using uh, our honeycomb technology for the chest protectors for the motor bikers. So it is indeed the case huh, yeah. that uh, those polypropylene honeycombs but are it's, using those. Okay. It's definitely less uh, performing than an aluminum honeycomb in this, uh, mm -hmm. in this property. We have worked with special impact modified special impact designed uh, thermoplastics for improving these properties, for example, for, for helmets, bicycle helmets. There are some applications where this is interesting and we are open in developing honeycombs from different polymers uh, suppliers uh, present and, and propose. Okay, thanks. Uh, the next question is from Yarne Silence. Um, he's asking when combining these very recyclable and sustainable thermoplastic cores with composite prepreg, wouldn't the panel as a whole still be very difficult to recycle due to the very to the large variety of materials that are difficult to separate? It's yes, yeah. of course. This is completely true. It's not the ideal to combine a thermoplastic honeycomb with a thermoset skin. Uh, obviously, this is not a, a real milestone in improving. We, if you compare, of course, the CO2 footprint of a Nomex core with a thermoplastic core, you still have a big improvement. But in an ideal case, you use thermoplastic skins when you use a thermoplastic honeycomb core. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, and preferably from the same thermoplastic so that you can recycle. Not a material sandwich system. The right? That's material, yeah. Then you can have uh, very easy regrinding and using the material for injection molding with short fibers. No separation either whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Raoul uh, Patki, sorry, uh, at Mohawk Industries, is asking uh, Has honeycomb material been shown to improve impact resistance and fracture? Uh, toughness of brittle material, materials like glass and ceramics by laminating on the back of the brittle material. Of course, yeah. This is uh, something which is, uh, is done. Um, so with thin marble stones, for example, a honeycomb core is used for supporting this fragile, expensive material. So then only a very thin layer can be used and the handling is possible because you you have essentially a Stabilize it, right? sandwich right. panel Honeycomb. behind uh, your fragile, fragile material. Okay. Uh, Eduardo Paz from, from Motus Integrated is asking if you can share your presentation so I can answer this one. Uh, uh, of course, we will share uh, the recording of the, of the webinar together with the presentation of uh, Johan and Thomas uh, right after the end of the, the webinar. And his question then is beside the uh, RPET uh, trend in honeycomb construction, what are the trends uh, you forecast, you forecast, sorry, in the auto automotive industry in the next 10 years. Yeah, I think we, we are talking at, uh, about this a little bit uh, already that, well, today those evolutions are uh, conveyed with the combination of polypropylene honeycomb core and uh, very often thermo well, polypropylene composite schemes, uh, should it be natural fiber or glass fiber, and that is already, uh, well, a very nice evolution that compared to this very popular thermoset solutions, we can, you know, take a step towards sustainability. But we really believe that, 
you know, it's, it's, it's probably just a question of time. Those uh, solutions based on recycled PET honeycombs combined possibly with PET and even recycled PET composite skins, they definitely will set a, a new standard. And, and it is probably just a matter of time. The world is calling for, you know, uh, getting rid of the waste that is in the ocean and, and PET is the, is the, is the right, right material to take from the ocean and put to, to the application. So best it doesn't get into your ocean in the first place and gets recycled in a in a nice recycled stream. But first we need to clean the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next question is again from uh, Arshal uh, Shah from uh, Composites Tomorrow. Uh, he's asking if, if there is a comparison of performance uh, regarding stiffness and bending and price per unit uh, between PP aluminium and PC cores. Yeah, I think on bending, uh, stiffness and so on, well, it's very difficult to uh, to tackle that because, of course, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's the system, right, that, that works. It's the skin materials uh, that also obviously contribute to the performance. Honeycomb is, is doing a job there, and one can look at the sheet performance of those. Uh, uh, there is probably not a big difference in sheet performance between polypropylene and polycarbonate cores. The cost, uh, of course, well, that's, that's, uh, that's another question. I think we can... You know, get into details, but on the surface, uh, polypropylene, polycarbonate, aluminium would obviously be the order. Yeah, and polypropylene would be substantially lower in cost. Uh, so polypropylene really allows to have a very cost-efficient spacing of the skin material, and, and this reduces costs substantially. With aluminium and and polycarbonate, it's also it's also a little bit more difficult to bond uh, um, aluminium, for example. Um, normally, polypropylene is difficult to bond, but with the PET non-woven we have on top, it's so easy to process this further that the processing um, as well and with thermoplastic skins is even easier. So in the processing and in the cost of the honeycomb material can save most with polypropylene. Okay, uh, Martin Armstrong uh, from Gerrit uh, thought that fitting and also fixtures to attach panels or are they bonded to the main structure uh, frame? Now with Tamos plastic solutions, mm -hmm. it can be welded in, it can be welded on, it's friction welding, there's there are a lot of techniques to bond thermoplastic composites, of course. Um, and inserting the insert with uh, friction welding is, is a very efficient technology for thermoplastics. With uh, thermoset skins then, and with polyethylene uh, core, um, one can use the, the same uh, potting and the same processing than with the normal uh, thermo, thermoset skins. Yeah. It's of course advisable to use, it depends really on the market. In large volume automotive, it's best like we have shown, to directly when you form the part, also injection mold the functionality onto the part. Okay, and we've got one last question from Matthias Lindman. Uh, he's asking which surface foil or sheet combinated with the honeycomb cores is suitable for acoustic damping requirements, for example, for automotive. Yeah, we may need to distinguish uh, acoustic uh, dampening or vibration dampening, uh, you know, um, uh, and acoustic absorption. So these are two different aspects. And if it comes to absorption, which in automotive is uh, also very important, if you think of many automotive interior parts, well, their role is not only to provide a lightweight, but performing solution with regards to the mechanicals, well, they also want to reduce uh, the noise uh, generating the car to have it absorbed. Think of headliners and so on. And here, the um, uh, air permeability of the skin is really, really crucial. Honeycomb is doing a very good job uh, they're behind this permeable skin, a permeable skin, because the energy getting through that permeable skin gets very nicely dissipated within the thermoplastic honeycomb cell structure. So that's that's one thing. We actually have licenses also kind of specializing these applications, and we have, uh, I think the example here would be Diffoplastic with uh, their Texosaint solution. They actually are perforating the polypropylene skin, and they do provide such panels for um, industrial uh, acoustic absorbers. So this is absorption. That's absorption. The, the yeah. question was especially on, on damping. So the thermoplastic uh, honeycomb core and thermoplastic composites as such are very good in, in damping, better than thermoset composites. And the polypropylene honeycomb is, is pretty good in, in damping. And for, for automotive interior parts, especially with electromobility, 
mobility, it's important to have uh, further noise reduction, further damping, and uh, thermoplastic composite uh, and polypropylene core can have a, a, a very good effects there. Okay, so in the meantime, we received uh, one last question uh, mm -hmm. from Vincent Ma at Evonik. Uh, he's asking what advantage does RPET Onecomb have over low density PET foam core? Yeah, the compression stiffness mainly and compression strength. Uh, yeah, the low density foam core, pet foam cores are, are quite good, um, but uh, uh, honeycomb core with the vertical cell walls has additional performance advantages in, in compression strength and compression stiffness. Uh, the properties of a honeycomb core are better than the foam core properties. I think also in the recyclability, the foam always needs or often needs some kind of foaming agent mm -hmm. and um, we, with our honeycomb core we can process without any chemical additives mm -hmm. and um, Acoustic performance or this this uh, acoustic absorption we are talking about certainly better for um, RPET based uh, honeycomb cores. So yes. The CO2 footprint as such, I think, will also look better. CO2 footprint is a little bit better because of the fast and and efficient production without any additives. We have, um, I think, in the production also a cost advantage compared to the foam cores. I would also wonder if thermoformability uh, would not look better. Huh? So if it comes to complex shape automotive parts, for instance, I think that typically when I look at the polypropylene solutions, yeah, the PP honeycomb core looks better than PP based forms, for instance, which are not that popular. But in some cases, forms yeah. are forms are solution 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 as well. Also thermal isolation of forms is, is, is pretty good. Yeah. All right, I think uh, it has come to the, to the end. So I would like to thank you again, Johan and Thomas, for this presentation and for answering questions from the audience. Thank you, Benjamin, thank you, and yeah. thank you, all well, dear participants. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you, yes, to all our attendees today. If you have any other questions or need information about uh, thermoplastic on Econ sandwich panel technology, Econ Core and Thermex, please do not hesitate to, to contact Johan and Thomas. You have uh, their details uh, on their presentation. Again, this webinar has been recorded, so you will be able to view the entire program online later on GEC Composites Hub TV. And our next uh, webinar are scheduled uh, on November with uh, Valio, with uh, the content to be announced really soon. And on December 1st, we organize uh, a webinar with uh, Elkem Silicone on the secret to lowering production cost in composite molding, which uh, should be really interesting. So check the details on gccomposites.com if you wish to register for free. Um, again, we appreciate everyone's participation today and we hope to see you again at next GC Composites webinar. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.